folks, how are you doing? Uh, today we're finally going to be getting some power in the container workshops. Yep. Two weeks, maybe we've been having like gales and you know really strong winds. It's it's still bloody windy now, but it's it's um, it's the calmest it's been for two weeks, I reckon. So um, I'm gonna I'm gonna take this up top and at least try wiring it because um, I've got to pass the pass the cables down through the mast. The past the mast has collapsed at the minute. I have had it up um, and I'll bolt it on and see if I can. Uh, erect the mast on my own. Um, I'm not sure how that will go, could end in disaster, but um, however however I get on with a wind turbine, I'm definitely not going to take the solar panels up because they're like um, they're three foot with four foot panels and um, <clears throat> I don't like my chances of um, 
putting them on top of the rack that I made up up top uh, without without smashing something, you know. Um, yeah, maybe maybe even myself, yeah. <laughs> so uh, so we'll leave the solar panels for now. I might actually not put them in this video because um, I've just I've just made a really rough and ready rack uh, because my my eventual aim because I've only got 400 watts of solar. Uh, that's how much the box can handle. Um, I'm probably going to put a tracker on it. So. Um, but we'll discuss that later. I'll take you through the whole system once once this is up. Okay, wish me luck, folks. If you can hear it in here, um, the the noise of the turbine is being sent down the down the mast into the container. <laughs> Pretty crazy. Anyway, uh, I didn't die. Um, those glass fibre poles were a little bit more flexible than I would have liked, but I'll talk you through the system. I still haven't got the solar panels up, um, but uh, I'm, I'm less confident about doing the solar panels than I was about doing the mast. And if I was to do it again, I definitely wouldn't do the mast today. Jeez Louise. Anyways, uh, these are the these are the cables. That one still needs tidying up. I've, that's the power from the from the wind turbine. I've got to put the the solar in there. Yeah, anyway, there's a block connector up there. These run down the container and then through in between the two containers. Let me rearrange my temporary lighting for a second. Yeah, the, the power from the solar and the in the wind come along here and then feed into the top of my board. Um, this is what the board looks like now it's finished. Cable ties everywhere, that's the sign of a good electrical installation, as everyone knows. Okay, so we'll just go through the board quickly. Um, I did buy a uh, split, uh, not a split, uh, a hybrid solar wind charger. You can see it is now charging 25.9. Um, and what? So, the idea of these boxes is you can put wind and solar into it and it will give you a nice uh, clean DC output uh, to charge your batteries. It will also give you a, um, a protected lighting circuit but this is quite weak so the idea of this is that it will switch off when the battery voltage goes below uh, 20.4 volts or whatever. Like for a 24 volt battery that's when you want to switch off. I've got a 212 volt battery so really you're like um, 12 volt battery 10, 10 volts much below that and you're gonna you're gonna damage the battery, you know? So um, it really needs to stay. You can see the little windmill spinning around. Oh, I can tell you it's spinning faster now in real life. Woo! <laughs> anyway. Uh, yeah, because the because the protected circuit on the on the charger will only go to a couple of amps and I wanna run a workshop off this, rather than rather than using this one, I got my own separate um, under over volts relays which I can energise there, that's in the master switch so I flick that one switch and both of them come on um, yep and and I, I am quite set them yet because I haven't got a load on them yet I can't I can't set them up but um, this one does the lighting so and this one's going to do the load, like the AC and the DC. Um, that one says AC because that, that's going to feed my inverter when I finally get that. I'll do another video on my on my power supply, but um, this is the you know uh, what. 
basically I didn't want I didn't want to be using a tool and have the lights and the tool go out at the same time. So what I want to happen is um, I'll have all my loads on on that uh, voltage cut out and set that slightly higher than the the 10.2 volt or 20.4 volts, and then set this one bang on so that that cuts out um, exactly. Exactly when it uh, when it gets to the you know ten uh, twenty point four volts, and that's going to take a very long time because we've got eight hundred eighty amps of, um, of battery there anyway. So what happens here is we've got the wind and solar coming into this box. Uh, wind at the top, solar on these two. That's the battery out. So that just goes to our battery buzz bar, and these are the individual tails going down to the to the batteries. And we've got two big heavy cables that go up to the to the consumer relays and one j jumps across to the lighting. The light's not going to take much power at all because they're all going to be LEDs. And um, and these are switched those relays are switched by the by the voltage cutouts, yeah. So the supply of both of these voltage cutouts goes through the main master switch, yep, yeah? and and then this this voltage cutout goes to the lighting relay. And then that lighting relay goes to the lighting buzz bar here, and from that buzz bar to the to the breakers and switches for the lights. This one, this is our, our like, sort of consumer cutout, if you like, and this is supplied. The voltage is supplied by the master switch, but then the output goes. The output goes to this. These two switches here. So there's one for the one for the AC, one for the DC, so I can switch them off individually if I, I might want to not have the inverter running because the inverter costs a bit of energy so um, if you cannot have an inverter running you're, you're better off so if you're just using a DC load then you leave the inverter switched off which is good um, either way those two switches having been fed from this voltage cutout uh, feed the um, uh, relays up there so they switch that relay and then obviously I, I haven't done the supply yet so um, nothing is coming out of those. What we've got here is the dump, dump load. Yeah. Uh, now, what happens with a wind turbine is when you're not charging batteries, there's no resistance on the wind turbine at all, so it can just zip along, and it will eventually, um, eventually kill itself. Yeah. Um, so we have a dump load. That's what this is. And once we're once we're over, like uh, I think it's about 28 volts or something like that. Um, uh, the box is then going to switch to dump load yep which is cool but a little bit wasteful so what I've done I've put a, I put, um, a temperature sensor here and um, what I'm going to rig up is uh, a heated towel rail um, and I'm going to put a 12 volt heater element in that heated towel rail so when when the temperature sensor fills the temperature in this workshop is below 10 degrees and we've got more than 28 degrees being generated it's going to switch between the two and we'll have a we'll have a, a bit of heat in here which won't make a huge huge amount of difference but it's um it's better off better off being put into a heater than into this resistor which i thought was a uh sensible plan yeah um hey all right, so that's about it. I'm I'm quite happy with how this has gone, apart from the wind turbine, and I'm currently scared shitless that the whole thing is going to fold up. Um, we are experiencing very high winds at the minute, and what? What? Um, I mean, if it comes down, I'll let you know. Right? Uh, I, I'm always honest with you guys. Um, Right now, I don't know, there's a chance we're going to have more strong winds tonight and um, and if it gets much stronger than this, oh, sh I don't know, I should probably go and take it down now but I really don't want to because uh, it nearly had me off the edge of the container a couple of times, I really shouldn't have done it in this wind but you know, it's going to happen sooner or later isn't it, I think it's just nervous, I think I'm just nervous, yeah, I think it will be alright but I'm just nervous, anyway I will let you know if it, if it um, comes off the top of the container, hopefully it doesn't hit anyone because uh, we do get dog walkers come past here. Um, oh, I am generating a nice chunk of electricity though. Look at that, 26 point. Yeah, these batteries are going to be charging in no time at all, aren't they? Hey? Uh, and then um, I probably won't 
uh, do a video on the solar panels um, until I get the gear to do a, a tracker. Um, uh, I've got I've got my reasons for doing a tracker. Anyway, uh, this whole this whole thing is completely pointless because it would have been a lot easier and very very cheap for me to have just hooked it up to my other workshop. Um, but uh, I, I kind of have a a long term plan. With a, I, I, have a, I have an idea for a, a mini grid. Um, it's just like one of those little ideas in my head, and um, I think I think there's a, a way we could do we could do um, you know sort of off grid power generation a lot better than people are doing at the minute. Um, and I'm interested in it, so uh, so I thought I'd do this little system and uh, power my shed with um, wind and solar and see what happens. Learn a bit about it. Yeah. All right. Okay. Take it easy, folks. Thanks for watching and like and subscribe this video, share it if you can, like it always helps and I'll see you all later. Bye bye!